Today is a very exciting day because Scott Oreck has invited me to his favorite place in all of Coronado. He's right there sitting on that porch. Let's go say hello. Hi, nice to see you all. Hi, Scott, great to see you. Well, Scott, it's another beautiful day here in Coronado and I'm so excited to be with you and your friend today. So can you tell us where you've decided to bring us and who we're with? This is actually of all the spots in Coronado, the Dell, the beach, the yacht club, all the mini golf course, everything was so special about Coronado. This is actually one of the most special places for me in all Coronado. It's the porch. Yeah. <laughs> it's the porch of my neighbor's house here at 936 Adela in the home of Sandra Vickers and her husband Jerry. And uh, it's where I end up pretty much every afternoon at the end of the day okay. uh, with a cocktail and my dog and my wife. And we get to tell stories and it's just really, really a special, special place. And lucky enough, that after five years of construction going on in this neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, which I did a couple years of the damage <laughs> and punishment, okay. that Sandra, and I think it's mostly because of my dog Buster, but Sandra <laughs> has us over to visit on the porch. And lucky enough to hear the stories of old Coronado. Sandra's been here 68 years and grew up here, so she can share a little about what it was like being in Coronado all those days ago. Well, it's, it's a magical place to have grown up in, and it's. A, magical place to continue to live in and of course we are so grateful for our new neighbors uh, after having the construction going on which was which was very arduous despite all the changes in the growth and the traffic it's wonderful and I love it. And you've I've, seen a lot of changes with our neighborhood too. Yes. I mean tell them about the house across the street that was oh, there. The this Spanish was a, house. a lovely house from Agatha Friedman who was a uh, eccentric woman. Her husband had been a physician and she, he died and she was an estate appraiser and had <clears throat> was very eccentric. But then she died and her two boys sold it. But it was a lovely, lovely piece of property which obviously uh, has been taken advantage of because well, now we have two big houses on Two it. big houses. Mine is one of them unfortunately. But I didn't have anything to do with the tearing down. In fact, when I saw the property come available, I didn't think it would be allowed to be torn down. It was an old Spanish hacienda mm -hmm. built by a guy named Oscar Dorman. And it was really mm. one of his significant works. It had to be because it was such a substantial house. Mm -hmm. And it got through the hoops of being deemed non-historical. Mm -hmm. And they built, tore it down and two builders were gonna build each houses for themselves. They sold one lot off to another guy and then I bought the other lot. And was fortunate enough to stumble into this neighborhood because when it was my wife's, my wife's pick, she loved this idea, idea of living here after we lived by the beach and the golf course and all around. But she picked this neighborhood, which led us to being able to come to the porch and enjoy it every evening. It's such a, a great place to be. I'm curious though, what, what about this, this center of Coronado that makes it so special that your wife likes and, and that you also love, Sandra? Convenience of living close enough to the ocean where I can either walk, but mostly I ride my bike mm -hmm. uh, when I go swim. And uh, my church is a couple of blocks up and around the corner. and. Uh, uh, I can go to the post office very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's very convenient. Okay. And yet, I'm a little bit removed from the real busyness. Right. So you still feel like you mm -hmm. have like your, your little neighborhood feel. Here. Yes, we do. We... Oh, she's got all the neighbors come by. Everybody's been walking by the hood. <laughs> and I feel privileged again to be up here on the, on the porch and they all come by and kind of want the porch wannabes, they want to be up here. We have Everybody a few that join us, yeah. their dogs and join, stuff. But, but he knows more it's, people than I do that go by. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat place to hang out. And we, and as she said, we're close to everything. The shops, the restaurants, mm -hmm. we can walk, I, you know, the Dell, you can walk to the Dell. Uh, the Yacht Club is just down the hill. So it's just really a wonderful neighborhood. And this is one of the nicest spots in the neighborhood right here. Oh, that's, that's really lovely. I know that you've, you know, you've seen so much change happen. Mm -hmm. So. You know, what are maybe some of the things that you loved about Coronado, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and, and things that you love now that makes you stay here? Well, I stay here because I love my home. I love my husband and I have this lovely home, and we're very blessed. Yeah. And, and despite the fact that we are aging, and the house is a little, being 108 years old, is a little becoming difficult to keep up. Okay. But, I just can't imagine ever living any place else than Coronado. And um, anyway, the changes that the one thing that I loved when, when I was growing up was the safety and the quiet. Mm -hmm. 
we, we didn't have big trucks going by and, and UPS trucks and they're, they're noisy and just the volume of traffic. We didn't have that. And well, after they did the bridge, yes, the whole island changed, changed and that, everything, Every, everything became changed. more of a destination yeah. resort. And so yeah. the island resort field kind of took over the old village cottage ambiance of, mm. you know, a lazy little beach town that was hard to get to. You had to take a ferry to get to. So it's changed dramatically in that regard. So, that. yeah. It's changed also in the, the, the money. People with money have come. Okay. And when I, when my father built a house here, it was... Uh, there were a lot of Navy people. My father was had, was in the military, in the Navy, and it was much lower key, much more, much less showy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just so that's difficult sure. for me, but it is what it is. You know, progress totally. can't stop progress. Now, how important do you think, and, and you as well, Scott, that this house, um, it is 108 years old, it's now a historic designation, that um, it's important that Coronado still have these types of properties to preserve? Absolutely, and Scott was, was the one that really talked me into getting it declared historic because all along I had felt that uh, I did not want the government or the city people to tell me what I could and could not do with, with our property. Right. But then I thought, it's just such a special house that, and he said, well, it's never going to be torn down. For, we for, have for a, properties like this are almost oh. iconic with this oh. architectural style, and we could never determine the builder or the architect, but it was designed over a house that the owner had found in England and had the plans for me, and it was kind of a replica of a house that he built there, but it was a substantial work of whoever built it in 1910 because it was such a substantial house. Right. And, uh, and for homes like this that are part of the fabric of Coronado, it's important that they're preserved and protected and stuff like that. The house across the street that, that we look across at was uh, was not even here when this house was built, was it? It was over on the ocean, wasn't the story was, about They that? built that house on Ocean Boulevard and there would be, it was a terrible storm and they didn't have all the rocks at Ocean Boulevard in those days, so the waves washed all the way up over the uh, Ocean Boulevard, and those people became very alarmed, and they moved their house over here. Oh and these two trees, these two pine trees, this, they're not uh, 108 years old. I do not know exactly how old they are, but I'm figuring they're probably each about 90 years old, okay. maybe 95. So the house was here first. Yeah. The house, the house was, was here, here first. first. Yeah. I have a picture. Of, yeah. of, of the house and, and these palm trees were shorter than a man. Well, I, now yeah, they're... I can't see, yes, they're so tall. <laughs> yeah, they're tall but, yeah. uh, you know, I feel so honored to be sitting here in this porch. It seems like such this exclusive club, uh -huh. this ritual that you guys have. <laughs> I'd be uh, honored if I could stay and maybe join you guys for a drink and we, hear more sure. conversation. We love it because we, this is uh, a perfect way to end the, end the afternoon with um, an adult beverage, as my my daughter calls it, yes. <laughs> and uh, or some iced tea. Yeah, and, Jerry and chat. iced so tea. So yeah. we would love to have you, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, thank you both. Great, thanks for coming. Mark? Sarah, hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's such a beautiful day out today. I'm really excited to go for a bike ride. Yes. I'm just a little curious as to why you're wearing a life vest. I wear this all the time. <laughs> no, actually, we are going for a bike ride. Okay. But we're going for a bike ride on the bay. No. They yes. do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hydro Bike SD. They brought them to San Diego. The only company that does it. So let's go check it out. Okay. I'm definitely <laughs> going to need one of these because I'm a little shaky on land riding a bike. So I'm a little worried about the water, but let's do it. They probably have helmets too. Let's go check it out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So Mark, I had no idea that you can actually ride a bike on the water. How did you find out about this? You know, I didn't really know that either until I went out fishing with a buddy of mine a couple weeks ago. We were cruising out. We saw these bikes down here and I was like, man, that looks cool. And then I talked to a few friends at work and they said they had done it previously. 
So I was like, all right, let's go check it out. So yeah, of course, you know, I love doing stuff on the water. Of course. So yeah, came down and checked it out and now we're gonna go try them out, can't wait. So Rich, you're the owner of Hydro Bikes SD. And from my understanding, this is the only place that you can find hydro bikes in the entire city. So how did this come about on your radar? Uh, well, Sarah, I saw these online and then I rode them at another location and I realized that no one had them here. Yeah. And uh, decided, you know, I wanted to ride one all the time and I uh, wanted everyone else to be able to ride them because they're so much fun. So I started Hydro Bikes SD and uh, I'm in partnership with Aqua Adventures. And I think I'm at the best location on Mission Bay and probably in uh, the best one on both bays as well, so. Nice, I had never actually been to this part of the bay, so what is, uh, what's unique kind of about this side of things? Well, one thing is it's uh, very protected from the wind, so the riding's a little nicer. There's a bait barge, and so there's uh, almost 100% chance you'll see seals yep. or sea lions. Also, there's a lot of free parking over here and uh, so it's a little out of the fray. So it's a really nice spot, you know, to either ride a hydro bike or a kayak or a paddleboard. All right, so a little so, bit more of a, a locals uh, kind of gem around that's right. the bay. Um, well, Mark and I have done a ton of stuff on the water. Uh, we've jet boarded, we've kayaked. So I feel like there's like varying degrees of uh, how much experience you need for stuff like this. So what about the hydro bike? Like, what's the learning curve like on one um, of these? There's really zero learning curve. Okay, thank um, that's, that's good to so, hear. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're actually easier than riding a land bike because they have these pontoons. Uh, which are like giant giant training wheels. So each bike has a footprint of 50 square feet. So they're impossible to tip over. Oh good. They can't sink, you can't fall off them. Um, <laughs> if you're eight years old or 80, you can ride them on Sunday. We had a 90 year old rider. Okay, yeah, right. so I feel a lot uh, better about it. Right, I think we're running better, we're good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because Mark and I uh, love getting in the water, and you are such uh, you're just you're just such an expert about this whole area. I feel like Mission Bay, uh, Mission Beach, PB. So, um, what things are kind of happening now? We're winding down summer. We're gonna start, you know, heading into like the the school season. So, um, what's been happening in this area? You know, it's funny. I was laughing. There, there's a little five pound chihuahua at our feet. So <laughs> if you see. Any of us glancing down, that's a, <laughs> he's like the, the doc dog. Yeah. Anyway, back to the market. Um, you know, we've, we've still had an incredible year. The market continues to go up. Um, rates are starting to tick up a little bit as well. So the interesting part about it, we've, summer was a little slower than normal, but we've seen it bump up here recently. Like my kids are starting school next week. I know a lot of kids have start, already started school. A lot of the people from Arizona have gone back. So um, in Pacific Beach over the last two months, there were 34 sales, anywhere from 270 grand all the way up to 2.2 million. Wow. So the nice part about PB where I live and you know, Rich doing stuff like this, it's just a fun outdoor lifestyle. I mean, I'm born and raised in Alaska. It, it, we're coming, right there my buddy's like, yeah, we're, you know, summer's wrapping up. Um, we're, you know, it's getting cold. I'm like, well, okay, summer is not, summer's wrapped up here, but not really. So come out and do some fun stuff. So that's the awesome part about it. I mean, we are literally five minutes from PB proper, 10 minutes from PB proper. So to come over and be able to enjoy stuff on the water, it's just awesome. Yeah, it's just like so. right in your own backyard. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned that there was something like around 270,000, then all the way up to 2.2 .2 million. I had no idea you can actually find something kind of in that low price point. Yeah. Um, obviously you can get up to the higher price point, but is, is there kind of stuff in that whole little range of values that people can find? You know, the average sales price in PB for the last couple months has been about 950 grand. Okay. So a $270,000 property in PB will get you a little one bedroom, one bath condo. Fairly simple, but you know, a lot of times a lock and leave. So instead of coming and renting a hotel, you have a little place you can come and enjoy. Yeah. There are some changes going on because they just voted um, not to continue the short term rentals. It's still kind of in the process of what exactly will be. Um, that will go in effect as of 2019 in July. So there have been some changes. So people are kind of looking for the alternative instead of coming out, being able to vacation rent something. Hey, maybe I'll just buy a little condo and use it for myself and our family or, you know, use it as a long term rental. But yeah, it, it, all ranges, all prices, you know, anywhere from 
probably 200 grand, even a little studio, mm -hmm. up to 10, 15 million. So, okay, just yeah. depends what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, we can help with every one of them. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you can. And uh, like you said, I know your, your buddies in Alaska, they're starting to hunker down and get ready for winter, but I feel like here in San Diego, you know, as we head into September, October, I mean, summer, if it doesn't even get hotter, it definitely just stays the same of what it is. So it's beautiful. Uh, Rich, you had kind of mentioned that there was going to be some changes in this area, kind of in a, a real estate aspect too. So what are some of the new things that are opening up around here? Sure. Well, in addition to the bikes, uh, Aqua Adventures, who uh, rents the paddle boards and the kayaks, uh, they're in partnership with the Wellness Lounge, and they do yoga, chiropractic, massage. They're opening in the next few weeks. Great. And also there's a restaurant called Tower 2. It yeah. used to be in Ocean Beach. Yeah, okay. Great fish tacos, probably the best in San Diego. Oh, and okay. um, real good beer selection. Uh, they're going to open as well. That might be four or five months. Okay. But um, so it's just going to be a, a big community here. Cool. With then lots of things to do. Lots yeah, of lots of new food, stuff Good food, good drinks. Yeah. It, it, so. it gives you the opportunity to get out on the hydro bike, take a nice little ride around. Uh, you can either go, I guess, uh, really get like your fitness on or just kind of cruise and then park the bike and go grab uh, some of those best fish tacos and a beer. Right, and maybe a massage too. <laughs> maybe a massage yeah. too. Been so. yeah. I did see that the, uh, the bikes do have cup holders, so Maybe stick a bit around well, no, Yeah, a little probably, cocktail probably or something. That, okay. Yeah. Well, let's get <laughs> on these things. Just don't tell my insurance company. And, yeah, we yeah, yeah. We're all good. Scratch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I think it's time to get on this. You know, you got to try everything on Mission Bay at least once, and let's I'm happy to, to go with you. Awesome. Do some wheelies on this thing. Maybe not. Well, Mark, that was awesome. I had a great time. Yeah, that was so much fun. You know what was surprising? It's a good workout, too. I know, it I totally thought it'd be is. Easier, but it's a good workout. Feel good. Yeah, my quads are going to get a nice uh, little workout after this. Uh, Checked out the San Diego Bay. These water activities seals. we do, they're so fun. I can't, can't wait for the next one. Boom, gotcha.